This is an aimbot powered solely by artificial intelligence. He created Call of Duty cheats in 20 minutes using ChatGPT. In late 2022, AI began taking the world by storm. Companies quickly began receiving billions of dollars from investors, and the technology began to skyrocket. It didn't take long for this technology to find its way into online gaming, as hackers began to realize its true potential. A new method of cheating that was completely undetectable. Instead of having to inject malicious code into the game's files, the AI could simply look at the screen and emulate a human's movements. If AI keeps progressing at the same rate that it has been, the future of online gaming could be doomed. So how do hackers use AI to cheat? And why is it almost impossible to detect it? Let me explain. There are several forms of AI cheats that are currently in development or that have already hit the market. FPS games like Valorant, MOBA games like League of Legends, nothing is safe. In order to understand just how dangerous AI cheats are, we first have to dive into how their non-AI predecessors work, starting off with aimbots. Most games where aimbot is used exist in a 3D space. This means that within the world where the game exists, there's an x-axis to represent forwards and backwards, a y-axis to represent left and right, and a z-axis to represent up and down. These three numbers come together and it's what represents the player's position in the 3D world. It's commonly referred to as a vector. Not, no, not that sort of vector, hey, just pay attention. Normally, these exact values aren't visible to any random player, they're stored in a safe location. To use an analogy, let's picture it as a fortress. This metaphorical fortress exists inside of the game's memory. To access these values, the hacker has to break into this fortress to try and find them before the anti-cheat realises that there's been an intrusion. Once the hacker has access to these values, they can use some math to override their current view angle with one that just happens to be looking directly at an enemy's head. Over the years, hackers have gotten pretty good at covering their tracks, but no matter how advanced or how skilled the intruder is, their one fatal flaw is that they will always have to physically enter the fortress. This means that eventually, through one way or another, they will be caught. This is where AI cheats come in. Just because you can't directly see the vector of yourself or an enemy player doesn't mean you can't see the enemy. Whenever you would need to shoot an enemy, they're still going to appear on your screen like usual, otherwise you wouldn't be able to play the game. The vectors were only necessary so that the hacker could program the cheat to snap directly to the correct location. But what if that wasn't necessary at all? What if the intruder never even had to enter the fortress? Let's talk about neural networks. Neural networks are a type of artificial intelligence inspired and modelled after the human brain. These models are designed to recognise patterns and make decisions based on the data that's being fed into it. Take this picture for example. You know that without too much thought that this is a humanoid character. Same goes for this, and even this one, even though the picture is a little bit deep fried. Your brain will flawlessly interpret these images without any issues, even if it's fuzzy or low quality. And that's because your brain is pretty amazing at what it does. The concept of artificial neurons date as far back as the 1940s, when the first model was introduced by Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts in 1943, so it's not exactly a new concept. However, even though the foundations for artificial neural networks have been laid for many years, it wasn't possible to explore these concepts due to technological limitations. That is, until recently. So how is it possible for a computer to replicate the same phenomenon and eventually use this to cheat in an online game? Well, that's a good question, so let's dive into it. This is a deep neural network. You can imagine it as sort of a series of neural networks stacked on top of each other, with each layer having different responsibilities. Firstly, you'll have the input layer. This is where the input stimuli, for example, an enemy in a video game, will go. Then you have the output layer. This is where the AI returns what object it believes the input stimuli to be. A well-trained artificial neural network would light up the node corresponding to an enemy with, hopefully, more than 95% confidence. Just like how when you look at this photo, you instantly recognise it as an enemy and possibly even feel emotions such as rage towards the League Balance team for creating Yumi, or towards me for showing you this piece of shit. But how is it possible for artificial intelligence to come to this conclusion in the first place? In between the input and output layers are several hidden layers, responsible for all of the calculations that take place. Theoretically, an artificial neural network can have an infinite number of these hidden layers, and the more there are, the more sophisticated the AI is. So this node right here, in hidden layer 1, it could be responsible for detecting basic features such as edges or simple shapes. 
another node in a deeper layer might identify more complex patterns like the shape of an arm, and so on. This process repeats itself until we reach the output layer, and the neural network returns what it believes it's seeing. This is how a computer is able to artificially emulate a brain's neural network and recognize stimuli. Cars, humans, Kasumi, all are identified by a computer. More complex networks, such as that of GPT-4, arguably the most recognized AI right now, are over 100 layers deep. However, for more primitive purposes, like cheating in a video game to make yourself look better than you really are, hackers will use something much simpler. If you're looking for a change of pace from all the games that you've been playing lately, you can try today's sponsor, War Thunder. The most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made is available for free on PC and console. Take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and the ships of 10 major nations, ranging from the planes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and tanks of today. You can immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. War Thunder offers three distinct modes, each ramping up realism progressively. Arcade suits those craving fast-paced matches with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics, while Simulator mode ditches all of the guardrails for the ultimate challenge. Realistic mode, the perfect middle ground, strikes a balance between intensity and authenticity. However you choose to play, you'll find it here. Play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium. It's available for a limited time only, so be quick. Rapid advancements in the effectiveness of graphics cards, along with the internet providing training data on an immense scale, help to propel the development of AI tremendously. These methods are currently being used to develop the most advanced cheats that the world has ever seen. Throughout AI's surge of popularity, a subfield would soon emerge, named computer vision. Computer vision is a field of artificial intelligence that uses neural networks to help identify and understand objects in real time. Wow, that's cool, computers can see. Wow, how does this help me hit Diamond in League of Legends? Well, that's a great question, but don't worry, we're getting there. One of the most widely used and well-developed computer vision algorithms is called You Only Look Once, or YOLO for short. YOLO is incredibly good at what it does, I mean, comparatively to what we've seen before at least. It's really one of those technologies that's advancing at an almost unnerving pace. In fact, YOLO's developer, Joseph Redman, became so concerned about the potential applications of the technology that he ended up ceasing production, stating, I stopped doing CV research because I saw the impact my work was having. I loved the work, but the military applications and privacy concerns eventually became impossible to ignore. And after seeing this clip, can you really blame him? It must be a truly saddening experience to be one of the most skilled developers in your field with dreams of your creations being used to help others, only to be forced to stop for fear of it being used to destroy life rather than augment it. 1.3 million people die every year in traffic accidents. Our algorithm could help identify you know, pedestrians, other vehicles, and potentially you know, these fast, accurate visual algorithms could make traffic accidents a thing of the past. Nevertheless, development was continued by others, with the most recent release being YOLO version 8. So let's take a look at how it works. We know from before that computer vision uses neural networks to take an input image and determine what's being shown. But a neural network doesn't come pre-configured. Each node needs its own individual weights and biases to help decide what the pixels being given to it are most likely to mean. You could go in and tweak all of these individually, but this would take an impractical amount of time. So instead, we use a method called backpropagation. Backpropagation is essentially showing the neural network a set of data, and based on how close its guesses are, we can work backward, filling in the blanks along the way. Using League of Valorant as an example for this is probably a little too dodgy, so we're going to be using a flash game. A neural network needs a lot of data before it shows any effectiveness, usually above 10,000 images. But to keep things short, we're going to use 250 images for this example, since we're only trying to recognize one object here. These little fellas that are walking threateningly towards you. After taking the screenshots, each photo is manually annotated with whatever class you want it to be recognized as. It's then fed into the AI, which allows it to process all of the data. This will usually take quite a bit of time. For this example, with only 250 pictures, it still took about two hours. Afterward, the AI makes its best prediction of what's being shown on the screen. The hacker can then go and augment this code however they'd like and most of the time, if it's being used for malicious purposes, this will involve automatically locking onto and clicking on the target. 
When you really dive into more depth, it does obviously get a lot more complex than this, but for now, let's keep moving and take a look at a more practical example of how this works. Before the development of competent AI cheats, there was generally just two different branches of cheating. The third branch is what AI will use, but we'll get to that shortly. Firstly, internal cheats. They're exactly what the name suggests. They're injected into the game's memory, typically through a DLL file. They have the most capability, but they're also the most detectable. This is because they're directly utilizing the game's source code. Coincidentally, this is also why it's such a big deal when a game's source code is leaked, and also why they sell for so much. Take for example, the source code of League of Legends. This got leaked in 2023 during a data breach and was put on the market for $1 million. This really seems like an outrageous amount to pay for a game's code, but when you think about it from the perspective of a cheat developer, it becomes a little bit more clear. This source code essentially contains a map of all the security flaws in the fortress, how to avoid every single guard, and what's more, instructions for how to make your cheat as effective as possible when it is created. This is a gold mine for a hacker. League of Legends boasts 130 million players every month, and before Vanguard, Riot released a statement that revealed almost 15% of League games contained a scripter during its worst periods. Considering that most cheats will hover around $35 a week, all of a sudden, $1 million for the source code seems pretty cheap. Aside from internal cheating though, there's also external cheating. External cheats are typically less powerful than their internal counterparts, but they do come with the advantage of being far harder to detect. Instead of being directly injected into the game's files, they'll simply read and write to the game's memory, which exists inside of your RAM. They're also a lot easier to create, which over the years has led to external cheats becoming the more popular of the two options, even in official tournaments. In one of the most well-known cases of cheating in an esports tournament ever, Forsaken, who was a part of Optic's Indian CSGO team at the time, tried to disguise an external cheat by renaming it to Word EXE, only to get caught after some extremely blatant clips. That's why, oh, what? What? Upon being approached by an admin, Forsaken initially refused access to his PC. After asserting his position, the admin asked the player to alt-tab out of CSGO, only to find a suspicious program running in the background. He immediately closed and deleted the suspicious program right in front of the admin's eyes, a skill in of itself. Hackers that use AI, however, don't exist within the confines of internal or external cheats. Due to them not having to interact with the game's memory at all, they're essentially undetectable and therefore unstoppable. This allows AI to wreak havoc in online games, but slowly, developers started figuring out ways that they could fight back. Despite the swift advancements in the development of AI cheats, they too had tells. Tricks that were necessary to develop them. The same tricks that made them visible. So, what were they? As you hopefully know by now, AI cheats don't have to interact with the game files to display targets on the hacker's screen or to lock onto their heads to automatically shoot them but they can't gain access to the user's mouse movements by pure magic. I mean, maybe one day, but we're not quite there yet. So, cheat developers will use something called the Windows API. The Windows API is a set of tools provided by Microsoft to assist developers in building applications. It allows them to interact with lower level components of the operating system and other core system functions. This includes a function named mouse event, which gives some third party code the ability to move and click the mouse. This was necessary for computer vision to venture into the zone of what most people would consider a cheat. There are some other scenarios, but we'll delve into that soon. Anti-cheat developers quickly realized that this reliance on the Windows API was an opportunity for them to finally fight back. Vanguard responded to the influx of new AI cheaters by blocking the mouse event function entirely. Other anti-cheats, such as BattleEye, Easy Anti-Cheat, Faceit, and even Punkbuster soon followed suit. The idea behind this was that there wasn't any legitimate reason for third-party software to be moving and using your mouse for you in-game, so they could safely disable its use. However, the anti-cheat arms race is a huge game of cat and mouse. Cheat developers soon found that there were other methods aside from mouse event that they could use to try and accomplish their goals, and in return, anti-cheat developers would try their best to find and disable these functions as they gained popularity. One of the more creative workarounds was changing the fire keybind from left mouse click to a button on the keyboard. This way, every time that the computer vision detected an enemy, it would automatically fire. This is more commonly known as trigger botting. Trigger botting was more effective in Valorant, where you could set enemies to have a custom outline color. A cheater could set the trigger bot to look for this custom color and then shoot whenever it was detected. As soon as I launch Valorant, the click events from send input on Windows don't work. Looks like Valorant has worked a bit on their anti-cheat. I'm suspecting Valorant blocks the send input calls. 
I've tried a bunch of other methods, including mouse event calls on Windows, but that's a failure too. As more and more methods began to get detected, hackers decided that they needed more creative ways to disguise the AI's inputs. Particularly persistent cheaters would soon move on to using drivers. If you've been on this channel before, you probably know what a driver is and how they work. But if you're new here, welcome, and let me give you a very brief rundown. Drivers operate at the deepest level of your computer's operating system, known as the kernel. They're responsible for direct communication with the hardware components of your system, such as the motherboard, graphics card, and other peripherals like your mouse and keyboard. They ensure that all of this hardware functions correctly and that your PC runs smoothly. If you're just a regular user, you probably wouldn't even know that these exist. They just do their job, silently in the background. Most good anti-cheats these days will also run at this level, but hackers soon discovered that they could intercept requests from legitimate drivers such as Logitech and Razer to disguise their inputs. By exploiting these trusted drivers, they can manipulate input data, making them appear as legitimate user actions and thus evading detection. There was even a famous Chinese driver that was used for a long time to virtually emulate mouse and keyboard inputs. Some of the functions that it was able to include was virtual mouse clicks, virtual mouse movement, mouse wheel emulation, and the ability to simulate either single or multiple keyboard presses. Eventually, Vanguard or other anti-cheats would discover these and add them to their list of flagged drivers, rendering the methods obsolete and once again advancing the game of cat and mouse. All of these detections drastically reduced the amount of cheaters who were able to slip through the cracks. However, as AI gained more widespread adoption, there was still one more method. A method which so far seems unstoppable. Most hardware cheats have been detected for quite some time now, but there is one thing that this doesn't account for. What if you never had to modify your hardware to use AI? What if it already came built in? What if I told you that there is a new gaming monitor that uses AI to let you, well, cheat? Six months ago, MSI previewed a monitor with inbuilt AI that will flag an enemy when they're spotted on screen. SkySight works by analyzing the on-screen minimap to see where enemies are coming from which is something you can do with your own eyes. But having an AI assistant that watches the map for you and then puts an icon on the screen to show where the threats are coming from is probably a huge help. Now, calling this as impactful as something like wall hacks would be disingenuous, but having a tool like this undeniably gives you an advantage that your opponents won't have. Imagine never having to look at your minimap again in League of Legends. Whenever the jungler appears, you can get a notification on your screen. Imagine a game like Warzone. If an enemy is hiding off in the distance in a hard to spot location, you wouldn't need to worry about it, because the AI could just spot it for you. This monitor is meant to hit the market sometime in 2024, in professional tournaments, sure, this could be banned, but most people who play online games do so from their own homes. That's sort of the whole point. This issue also extends beyond just monitors. Recently, Razer released a firmware update for one of their new keyboards that allows it to use nullbind scripts on a hardware level. In games like CS2, nullbinds are banned since they're so effective they're considered to be cheating. Razer realized that the word cheating has a little bit of an image issue, so they're calling their new technology SnapTap. The way that it works is simple. In the majority of games, you can only move one direction at a time. If you're holding down A to move left, and you then press D to move right without letting go of A, you'll just stop moving. SnapTap changes this, so that whenever you press down a new key, it automatically deactivates the previous key. They just remove the window for human error. In games like CS2 where counter strafing is an integral mechanic, this provides a considerable advantage, hence why they were banned in the first place. Even in Overwatch, these scripts allow for some ridiculous strafing. Only a couple of days later, Wooting, a competitor in the keyboard space, responded by also implementing this feature themselves. It seems like, now that the cat is out of the bag, there's no putting it back. As AI and technology continue to advance, does this mean that in a year or so, all monitors are going to include an AI assistant to help you play? Will every keyboard include scripts to give you an advantage? And as these become normalized, will the AI and hardware advantages increase in power until gameplay becomes a matter of who wields the better technology? All of this leaves players with the question, how far is too far, and where can we draw the line? Thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. You can play the game for free today by using my link in the description down below.